Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to Destroying Doubts where we take your doubts and misconceptions about Islam, present them to the Shaykh and hopefully have them destroyed. But before we do begin, can I kindly request that you hit the like button, subscribe and hit the notifications to be the first to find out when One Path releases their latest content. Let's get started. Shaykh, everyone knows Allah as Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, the Gracious, the Merciful. We know Him as Al-Qadir, the All-Powerful. But when we see this world and we look at it, we see suffering, we see pain, we see trauma. And for many of us, it's hard to reconcile the two together. And it's what we call today, the problem of evil. So, as a Shaykh, how do we deconstruct this doubt? The reality of this world is that it's not all, you know, uh, rainbows and flowers and, uh, you know, butterflies. butterflies. It's a place of trial, tribulation. Everything is not meant to go your way. It's actually you're expected to cop it in this world, you know. The second thing that we have to understand is really Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He deals with us according to how He wants to, not according to what we expect Him to do with us. We are at the end of the day slaves of Allah. Allah is the Almighty, the All Powerful. We are all His creation. Allah doesn't owe us anything. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very clearly in the Quran al Karim, He says, لا يسأل عما يفعل وهم يسألون. That it is not for the creation to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding His actions. Why did you do this and why didn't you do that? But on the other hand, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask His creation. Now, with that being said, also, like you mentioned, that Allah is Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. Every Muslim knows that Allah is the merciful, the most merciful, the most gracious. This fact is very manifest to us in the Quran al karim And it is from the free choice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willingly chose to deal with His creation according to mercy. كَتَبَ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ الرَّحْمَةِ That He has taken it upon Himself to be merciful. Now we come to what you mentioned. We see a lot of suffering, we see a lot of pain, we see a lot of heartache. Why? You know, why is there uh, all of this? What we can all admit to, whether we believe in Allah or those that don't believe in Allah altogether, what we can all admit to and witness is that all the suffering and all the pain, it's not without some sort of benefit. There is some benefit. Even if you don't believe in Allah, you admit that there is some sort of benefit through that comes to us through the suffering and pain that we go through. For example, you find that it's usually the times when we are most in need that, we, that are the toughest that bring us together, that make us work together, that make us uh, uh, turn to our Creator. We also find it's times of misery and pain that a person really appreciates the good that he had. Or when he sees others going through hardships, he appreciates the good that he has. We also see from the Quran al-Karim that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised that with every hardship, there comes two types of ease. So every hardship that we go through, don't, yani, don't lose hope. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring the ease directly after it. And then also we know that the one who is patient, the one who is accepting of Allah's decree, for him there is great reward awaiting him in the hereafter. إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ that for the patient, they shall have a reward which is without limits in the hereafter. So this also gives us comfort now that we understand the world around us, that this world is a place of tribulation, trials. It's not how you want it to be. It's how Allah wants it to be. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His mercy touches everything. What we have to do is try and expose ourselves to that mercy and see the world through the lens of Allah's book. You know, Allah's uh, divine book that He has given us. I mean, I mean, I guess we make dua for all those that are going through suffering, all those that are going through pain, trouble, and hardship in their lives, that inshallah, this will bring them solace. This will give them solace, knowing that Allah, He does not neglect their reward, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them Jannah bi idnillah. Especially this Ummah of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. You know, us believing in the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, we also believe that every word he uttered is complete truth. He actually already told us. He told us that my nation, this nation of mine, will go through a lot of hardship. He actually, in the authentic hadith, he says that this nation of mine is a nation that has been shown mercy to by Allah. 
What is the manifestation of this mercy? People might not, you know, uh, uh, expect it to be like this. But he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that the punishment that they deserve, they will not receive it in the hereafter, rather they will receive it in this world. This also comforts a believer, yani. It's also a form of forgiveness. A form of forgiveness, a form actually a sign that Allah loves you, as it's come in the authentic hadith. إِذَا أَحَبَّ اللَّهُ عَبْدًا إِبْتَلَاهُ If Allah loves a slave, then he will put him through hardships. These hardships actually, like we mentioned, one of the benefits of it is that it makes a person turn back to Allah. It's usually in the, in the hardest of times that you'll find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You'll find your heart is completely connected to Allah, full of iman, full of uh, honor and respect and love and fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And who is the, the, the one that went through the hardest you know, of lives? The Prophet wasalam. And the leader of all prophets, Prophet Muhammad wasalam, he went through the hardest of trials and tribulations. And those hardships that he went through, because his heart was attached to Allah, it just increased him in levels, increased him in devotion, in connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if a person's heart is you know, directed towards Allah, then really it doesn't affect him. The good, he realizes that it's from Allah. The bad draws him even nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. عَجَبًا لِأَمْرِ الْمُؤْمِنِ You know, yeah. of course, strange is the affair of a believer. There's always good wherever he looks. Yeah. Yeah. Sheikh, the next, I guess, doubt, and I guess this is a huge one, especially amongst, I guess, atheists. When they look at Islam and they see Islam, they see an all-merciful God, as we've mentioned. But then we see an all-merciful God who's created an eternal hellfire. A hellfire where there's suffering and there's pain and it's a severe punishment. And for them, it's very hard to reconcile the two. Even some Muslims, they have this doubt. How do we address this? Why would an all-merciful God create a hellfire where people will be punished for eternity? No. So, we mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful, the most gracious. But with that, like you mentioned, why would He create a hellfire, an eternal punishment for those that rejected Him and turned away from Him? First of all, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only punishes those that deserve punishment. Those that do not deserve punishment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not in any way punish them. What we mean by those that deserve punishment, if we were to go back to the Quran al Karim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it very clear to us who will receive punishment. That it has been revealed to us from Allah that the punishment is for he who kathaba, he rejects, he denies, watawalla, and he turns away. The one that receives punishment is the one whom the proofs of Allah's religion come to him. The proofs of Allah's religion come to him. He is well aware of them, and then with that, he decides willingly to turn away from it. Why? Because such a person, the truth was presented to him, he wasn't interested, you know, his, his state of uh, mind and his state of heart was saying to him that, you know, I'm not going to believe in Allah. So he had that intention. Seeing that he died in that state, intending never to believe in Allah, not even wanting the mercy of Allah, it's only fair that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him what he wanted. You rejected me, I'll reject you, I'll cut you away from my mercy. And they rejected him under the pretense of knowing full well that this was the consequence of rejecting. Yeah. And you know, this, I mean, this, uh, people have a misunderstanding that mercy, it's without limits, without conditions. No. If I, for example, if we have in, you know, in our community, someone that's going around killing, killing innocent people, one after another. He killed the first person, second person, he doesn't care. He's just killing people for no reason. Then the law gets hold of him. It would be very foolish on, on the part of the law to just let him go on the grounds of love and mercy. We love him, we have mercy on him, just let him go. It'd be very foolish. The wise decision would be, we see what this, the damage that this guy has done to the families. We see whether he's remorseful or not. We see what the families want, and then we make a suitable judgment. But just to, re to release him like that without, you know, without taking him to uh, account for what he's done, on the grounds of mercy and love, it'll be irrational. It won't make sense. No one in their right mind would do such a thing. Similarly, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enters a person into the hellfire, it will be because that person deserved it. The truth came to him, he was well aware of it, and then he rejected it. SubhanAllah. But I guess many people will be asking, uh, what happens to the one who never received the message of Islam? 
What about the person that never knew about Allah? The message of Allah never reached him. He was never aware of it. It was never presented before him for him to reject it and turn away from it. What will be the state of such a person? Again, you know, we go back to the Quran al Karim for guidance. It becomes very clear to us from the Quran al Karim that such a person will not be punished in the hereafter. Why? Because seeing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all just and all merciful, that entails that he does not punish for no reason. A clear cut verse regarding this is the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al Isra. وَمَا كُنَّا مُعَذِّبِينَ حَتَّى نَبْعَثَ رَسُولًا Very clear cut in its meaning. That we do not punish a people until we send to them a messenger to warn them. And there are many other verses that we can yani, mention in this regard. Yeah, so I guess what we're seeing is the one who rejects Allah with full knowledge of what he's doing, he will be outcast from the mercy of Allah. While those who obeyed Allah, those who followed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and even those who unknowingly disobeyed Allah, they will be, insha'Allah, bi'idhnillah, open to the mercy of Allah. And I think it's also important to draw on the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He doesn't want to punish people. He doesn't want to inflict His punishment on people, but rather He wants them to come to Islam, submit themselves and be open to His mercy. Am I right? Of course. You know, the scholars, they have a saying, they say, إِنَّ اللَّهَ خَلَقَ الْخَلْقَ لِيَرْبَحُ عَلَيْهِ لَا لِيَرْبَحَ عَلَيْهِ That Allah created the creation because he wanted them to win, to be successful. Not that he can prove a point or punish them or be victorious and throw them all into the hellfire and that's it, you know. Why would Allah want to punish you if you have belief in him and are grateful to him? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful. You know, on the, one of the most beautiful and heart touching ahadith that you come across, very famous, incident that took place at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. After one of the battles, you know, uh, the, the Muslims were victorious. So they uh, were bringing the prisoners together. From among these prisoners, they seen a woman. You know, the Prophet and the Sahaba were looking at this woman. She was frantically looking for something, you know, from one place to another until she found what she was after. She found her child. She picked up her child, hugged the child and started to breastfeed the child. So the Prophet والسلام, as was his uh, uh, habit, he was the best of teachers, teaching the Sahaba and teaching us, all of mankind, regarding the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said to his Sahaba, did you guys see this woman, how she dealt with her child? They said, yes, Ya Rasulullah. He said, do you think that she would willingly throw that child into the hellfire if she had a choice? They said, Ya Rasulullah, if she has a choice, she would never willingly throw that child into the hellfire. So, the Prophet والسلام, turning their attention to the mercy of Allah, Ar Rahman, he said, I swear by Allah that Allah is more merciful towards his creation than this woman is to her child by 70 times. So, that you know, it gives you a lot of hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The person that goes to Jahannam, he deserves it. Whether you know, we know what or not, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is يَعْلَمُ السِّرَّ وَأَخْفَى He knows the inner whispers, the inner secrets of a person. So the person that ends up in the hellfire, he will have no excuse. So I guess that takes me to the next question, which is why an eternal punishment for a finite amount of kufr or a finite amount of disbelief? That's the, th that's the thing, Yani. It's not a finite amount of uh, disbelief. It's actually infinite amount of disbelief. That person that goes to Jahannam, he will never believe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the, hell, the people of the hellfire. Beautiful scenario in Surah Al-An'am. That when the Jahannam is presented before them, they will say, if only we can go back to the dunya and rectify our situation. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, بَلْ بَدَى لَهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يُخْفُونَ مِنْ قَبْلِ That on the day of judgment, that which they used to reject and deny, it will be clear before them. They cannot deny it anymore. Now they are witnessing it firsthand. And if Allah were to return them back to the dunya, they would go back to their old habits. It would not, they would not have learned their lesson. وَإِنَّهُمْ لَكَاذِبُونَ and, and, they, and, and that they are great, indeed they are great liars. Why? Because they never had the intention to believe. When a person has an eternal intention never to believe, it's only fair that he gets an eternal punishment in return. And we also believe that the believer who enters Jannah, that person, 
if he lived in this dunya for a hundred years, a thousand years, ten thousand years, he was always going to stay as a believer. He was always going to die as a believer. That's the reason why you get in return an infinite amount of reward or an infinite amount of punishment. It all goes back to your state. The state that you died in, that was always going to be your state. SubhanAllah, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to live and die upon Islam no matter how long we live, Shaykh, SubhanAllah. Also, yani, uh, the generosity of Allah. On the day of judgment, after everyone has interceded, the prophets have interceded, the salihin have interceded, the righteous, the angels have interceded, everyone's gone to Jannah, there are still people in the hellfire. These people, all they had in their hearts was a mustard seed amount of iman, yani a drop amount of iman. All they had in, in their hearts is that I believe in Allah. I believe in Allah and I believe in whatever prophet was at their time. So out of the mercy of Allah, even these people will be taken out. Why? Because it goes back to the fact that they had in their hearts a small amount of iman in Allah. They were always going to be believers in Allah. So it's not fair that they stay in the hellfire, they'll be taken out also. The only one that remains in the hellfire are those that are completely black-hearted. You know? One of the punishments of the hellfire is that the hellfire will... Uh, you know, encompass a person and it will burn through all the way to his heart. Narullahi al muqada the kindled fire of Allah, Allati tattali'u ala al afida, that it will penetrate all the way to, to a person's heart. Why is it that it penetrates all the way to the heart? Because the heart, that's where, that's where the, yani, the problem was. The fact that that person didn't have iman in his heart, he rejected Allah and he was always going to reject Allah for eternity. The punishment reaches that heart, that morsel. And if you link it up to the famous statement of the Prophet والسلام, that in the body there is a morsel of flesh. If that morsel of flesh is correct, the whole body is correct. And if it's corrupt, the whole body is correct. Allah wa al qalb. Indeed it is the heart. So a person, you know, that has iman in his heart, that means there's good in him. Seeing that there's good in him, his final destination will be Jannah. The person that doesn't have iman at all in his heart, that person is corrupt. His actions will be corrupt. His final abode would be the whole fire. SubhanAllah, Sheikh. But I guess that gives rise to the question of why do good people that don't believe in Allah end up in hell? I strongly believe that it's impossible for a person that's good natured, if he's presented with Islam, how it is authentically proper presentation of Islam that he would reject it. Without distortion, without... Without any distortion, without any, any fabrications, without any uh, all of these uh, false claims that are made against Islam. If he is shown the true face of Islam, it's impossible. It's impossible. How can you deny it? Yani? It's complete truth. We ask Allah to make us of those who, who die with Iman and to allow us to die on Islam. Thank you very much for your contributions today. Uh, if you have any doubts about Islam or any misconceptions that you would love for us to feature on this program, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you so much for your support and we look forward to joining you next time. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.